طيب this is a continuation of the optional lecture which was segment 3 so this is segment 4 okay so let's take an stream this is stream consists of a only a only تمام the volumetric flow rate of the stream can be calculated from the molar flow rate times the specific volume of A. The same thing with the enthalpy. The total enthalpy of the stream. Come on, of course I should have put here a dot. Come on. So, the total enthalpy of the stream would equal the molar flow rate of A times the specific enthalpy of A where VA and HA are the specific or molar properties of pure A. Tamam. So, yani VA is the specific or molar volume of pure A. The units would be centimeter cube per mole of A. And HA is the specific or the molar enthalpy of pure A. Or the kilojoule per mole of A. Okay, let's now have A and B in the stream. Okay, A and B in the, the stream. And let's take a case where A and B form ideal solution. An example could be heptane and octane. They are so similar, okay, that they form ideal solution. So let's take, again for A and B now, let's take the actual quantities. We have the molar flow rate of A. If A, we have FB, molar flow rate of B, we have Epsilon, which is the volumetric flow rate, that's the total volumetric flow rate, 1340 centimeter cube per second, and let's have the the total enthalpy, the total enthalpy, which is again in terms of uh, rate, so this is 255 kilojoule per second, so you can tell that there is 254 kilojoule per second of energy going inside the reactor okay but let's concentrate on the stream right so let's look at the thermodynamic properties of pure species the specific volume of a is given the specific volume of b is given the specific enthalpy of a is given and the specific enthalpy of h is also given tamam so let's calculate some quantities let's calculate epsilon the total volumetric flow rate which is summation of fi vi so which gives me this plus this come on so and we can calculate the volumetric flow rate so when we calculate the volumetric flow rate come on we see that it is same as the actual volumetric flow rate come on and when we calculate the enthalpy Tamam. Calculate the enthalpy, the total enthalpy through the summation of Fi, Hi, yani me, meaning using the pure species uh, specific enthalpy or pure species molar enthalpies. Tamam. We get also a value that is close or that is exactly the same as the actual quantity. That means I can calculate the properties, the total properties of a mixture through simply summing the properties of the pure constituting species. That is if the solution was ideal. Therefore, therefore means this is correct. This is correct. This is correct as well. These are correct as well. No big deal. Tamam? It is fine to use these equations. Let's take another case where A and B form non-ideal solution. An example would be methanol and water, as you know. Again, these are the actual quantities. Tamam? These are the actual quantities. And let's now go to thermodynamics, get the properties for A, B, whether it was the volume 
or the enthalpy of course they will all be the molar properties and then let's calculate the quantities let's calculate the quantities let's calculate the volumetric flow rate from the same previous equation by summing up the volumes of the pure constituents okay or by using the molar flow rate and the molar volumes so when we do this we get a value of 210 cubic centimeter which is different than the actual value different than the actual value right it's more hmm let's look at the enthalpy let's try to calculate the enthalpy through the summing up the enthalpy of the constituent using the pure species enthalpies so um, we're doing this and again we get value that is different that is different than the actual property that means for non-ideal solution i cannot simply get the total property by summing the property of the pure constituting species i cannot do this which means which means that i cannot really use this equation as is if i have an ideal solution because here simply we are assuming that huh, the total energy of a stream or the total enthalpy of a stream can be simply calculated from the pure species properties after summing it up uh, which is not true if you have an non-ideal solution okay okay therefore how do we calculate the total volumetric flow rate and the total enthalpy well you not only need the thermodynamic property or you shouldn't actually use the thermodynamic property of pure species no you should use the partial molar properties partial molar properties m with a dash m with a dash m i with a dash okay so you go to thermodynamics and for a specific for the species and solution and you get their partial properties partial molar properties partial molar volume partial molar enthalpy come on okay and then when you do the summation you do the summation using the partial molar properties partial molar properties still doing the summation but using the partial molar properties which represents the actual contribution of each species to the total property of the mixture the actual not the ideal not what ideally would have contributed come on so after using the partial properties now we see that hmm it really matches the actual so we need some more sophisticated calculations to get the properties of the solutions come on so we calculate the properties of solutions by using the partial molar properties okay so again when you have an ideal solution let's take state now of a flow system we're taking a batch system okay so let's see here the number of moles of a is 25 mole and the number of moles of b is 6 mole the total volume the total this is all the actual volume is 201 the enthalpy is 17.5 kilojoules if assumed ideal solution then the total volume the total volume calculated assuming ideal solution summation of ni vi where vi is the molar property the molar property or the specific properties okay so this is the volume okay calculated assuming it was an ideal solution and then you can divide it by number of moles you get the 
molar volume the molar volume what about the enthalpy yeah we can do the same assuming ideal solution use the enthalpies of the pure species and we get this value or we can divide by number of moles and we get the molar enthalpy the molar enthalpy assuming ideal solution tamam but i will say it in reality we have non ideal solution because a and b form non ideal solution so i do not use the molar properties we use the partial molar properties tamam and then when you do this you actually get the correct answer look tamam or you can of course divide by number of moles and you get the molar volume property same thing with the enthalpy to calculate the total enthalpy you use the partial molar enthalpy of the species and you get therefore a, an answer which is very close to the actual experimental values so if you divide by number of moles you get the molar enthalpy the molar enthalpy the actual molar enthalpy okay let's take the difference then let's take the difference let's take the difference between the actual and the ideal volumes come on so we have minus 1.06 cubic centimeter per mole let's take the difference between the actual and the ideal enthalpies come on and then the difference is also with the negative minus 0.13 kilojoule per mole what do you call these quantities what do you call these quantities you call them the excess quantities or the excess properties that's the difference between the actual and the ideal tamam so our me is the excess property okay so let's look again at these excess properties we said an excess property is defined as the difference between the actual property actual property tamam the actual property value of a solution and the value it would have as an ideal solution the value it would have as an ideal solution at the same temperature pressure and composition which are also known as the mixing properties so v excess is also similar to delta v mixing and e h excess is same as delta h mixing that we talked about earlier okay so delta v mix is the volume change of mixing found from the measured quantities delta v total and delta h mixing the enthalpy change of mixing or the heat of mixing and it is found from the measured quantity q for example in our earlier example in the methanol and water when we mix them okay what happened the temperature went up right from 25 degree c to 32 degree c if i surround this mixture from outside of course with a water for example tamam and then wait until all of this heat which water of course at 25 degree c tamam and wait until all of that heat which was trapped inside the mixture to transfer to the water bath of course it will transfer because the temperature of the mixture is 32 the temperature of the water bath is 25 okay so if i wait enough long enough of that, for that heat to dissipate out to transfer out to the water in the bath okay and then of course the temperature of the bath will go up right so i measure the temperature increase of the water bath and then related to the heat simply by using you know q equals delta h c mass of the water bath times cp of the water times delta t so that quantity of heat okay so actually i have to wait until um uh, until the temperature of the 
mixture goes back to 25 degrees C again. So, which means the bath water should not be at 25 degrees C, sorry, should be at a lower temperature so that the heat continues transferring up until it reaches the bath to a temperature of 25 degrees C. Uh, sorry, until the temperature of the solution reaches to 25 degrees C. Okay. Then we have last question to answer. How are the specific or the molar properties found? Okay. So let's look now at the properties, the specific or the molar properties, am I? So the volume, for example, the enthalpy, they're all found from experiments. Of course, these values are absolute and real. These values are in reference. It's in reference to the enthalpy of A at, for example, zero degree C. Tamam? Okay. How are the partial molar properties determined? How do I determine the partial molar properties? M dash I. For example, VA dash, VB dash, HA dash, which are the partial molar properties. Well, you can determine it from experiment and solution thermodynamics relations. If you want me to remind you, for example, with this relation, partial molar property equals partial NM, which is the molar property, partial NI, come on, at the constant pressure, temperature, and all the number of moles of the other species in the solution kept constant. For a binary system, you have these relationships which we developed in Thermo 2. Okay, and for example, this is the partial molar uh, property residual. Okay, so it's for the residual equals RT ln phi i, where phi i is the fugacity coefficient. And you have other relationships as well. For example, this relationship and that relationship. Okay, so you have quite few different relationships to measure the partial molar properties. Okay, I hope I related now some of the things we talked about in this course to the thermodynamics 2 course that you have studied in the previous lectures. Thank you for listening and in the next lecture we'll go back to chemical reactor design. See you then.